everyone, thank you for joining Suds and Bees. Uh, in this video, I will be covering how I created the columns for the stained glass melt and pour. Uh, so these columns were first uh, melted in their mold, and I will show you how I put the lead borders around them. So here we have the columns uh, get setting up in the uh, and their molds. If you can see, I uh, put some melt and pour and I put the columns inside um, a mason jar just to keep them straight. Um, what I'm showing you there is what will be the lead border that will cover the molds. So I put a little bit of melt and pour into the square molds, which is was about 14 grams. And here I am unmolding the circle column. And here I am unmolding the square column. I will put in the description box where you can find these molds. Now here I am measuring uh, when, uh, where I will cut the, the column so it fits inside the mold. So I just make a little mark. Uh, you want to make it deep enough so uh, you can see it when you're about to cut. Making the mark again. Mark twice and cut once, as a uh, wood maker say. Now here I'm measuring the circle column that will go into the design, making sure it fits into that mold. Ah, oh, look at that, I should have measured twice. Fortunately, uh, it did fit. And here I am, here uh, what I'm doing is I've melted some clear base mountain pour and I added charcoal so it blends in to the what would be the lead border. And what I will be doing is adding, is I'm sorry, using that mountain pour as glue so that we can glue um, those pieces to the columns. So first you want to scratch your column and we want to scratch it to make sure that the, the other melt and pour that we're using as glue uh, sticks to the columns. Otherwise uh, they may unstick during your finished product. We're doing the same thing uh, to what would be the lead border so it also sticks to the melt and pour glue now I'm spraying everything with 99% uh, alcohol That also helps uh, melt and pour stick together. Now here I am grabbing just one of those kitchen um, brush things. But always remember to use your craft stuff just for crafts, not don't ever use your food 
tools for you doing your crafts. So I'm just brushing it on like if I were brushing glue. And we're going to wrap the column. You want to wrap it pretty tight, just like if you were making a sushi roll. If you've never made a sushi roll, just, you know, when you watch somebody make a sushi roll. You want to press on it tightly. You don't want to press on it too tight where uh, you're going to smush the soap. Because the black part is pretty thin, so uh, it's pretty fragile. But you want to touch it, um, you want to press on it firm enough where it's going to stick. And here I'm pressing it firm onto the table to make sure that it sticks. Now because I am taking quite a while to press this, uh, the melt and pour that I'm using as glue has dried up. So in the future what I would do is instead of putting the so-called glue all over the black part, I probably do it in phases as I need to press it down so it doesn't dry up and I don't create more um, more soap between it. See, just like this, this is the way I would do it in the future. And I believe that's what I do with the circle column. And right here I'm cutting the excess soap because you don't want anything bulking out because it has to look like a clean border just like the stained glass craft people do. Stained glass makers. And I did cut it a little too short so what I'm doing here is I'm stretching the black part out a little bit. And I am going to band-aid it with a little glue, since it's black. So this is why you want to color uh, your melt and pour the same color as your border, in case you have to you know, go back and fix things. And as you can see, my brush is starting to get stiff because the melted pour is starting to solidify. So all you need to do when that happens is put it back in the microwave for about 15 seconds and leave your brush in there. Um, your brush is silicone and can handle um, high levels of heat, so it's okay to leave it in there for a few seconds. I don't recommend leaving your brushes in there if you're going to microwave for 30 seconds or more. So I'm just touching it up on the places that didn't really get covered with the black. Okay, and here we're going to do the same thing uh, with the circle column. So I'm grabbing my border. And this time around, um, because I did learn from putting the border on the square column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of melt and pour 
on the edge. First I'm going to spray it with alcohol. Then I'm putting on a little bit of melting pour instead of covering the whole sheet like they did with the other one. Experience is key, I guess. Just so you know, the square one, the square calling was the first time I ever did this. So uh, we're all learning as we're going here. So right now I'm just pressing firmly. But I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to damage the soap. And I'm just holding on to it until the melt and pour dries. I'm pressing it against the table because I found that pressing it against the table was a lot easier than trying to hold it with my fingers. It just stays better. And that didn't work. What I think is that I had sprayed too much alcohol in the beginning. So maybe just like one squirt will do it. Um, I find that these columns get really slippery when you spray them with alcohol. Ready for it to stick. Now that the edge has finally stuck on there on the column, I'm putting more melt and pour slash glue uh, as I'm rolling and I'm just holding it down. And I keep doing the same thing and keep rolling it. And make sure it sticks. I'll take the last little bit, but if you can see the first edge finally stuck, so lesson learned is don't pour too much alcohol, don't spray too much alcohol on it. And there you have it. We just made the columns for the stained glass soap.
Thank you for watching.